<laughs> but he, he's good. He's a good guy, and uh, he's a one. He's he's real smart, and he's got the social graces of a badger. <laughs> Emmy winner Tommy Lee Jones is Woodrow Call. I hate rude behavior in a man. Won't tolerate it. His word was law. We talked about Bob Duvall and, and Tommy Lee and, and Rick Schroeder and, and Tim Scott, all these wonderful actors. Well, we're lucky to have uh, one with us here today. Of course, he played Roscoe Brown. He played Tommy Lee's father, believe it or not, in No Country for Old Men in a magnificent scene that must have run six or seven minutes. And it's just him in a monologue that's mesmerizing. Barry Corbin, could you come up and join us? <clears throat> You having possum for your supper, are you? <laughs> I thought it was a real guy when I saw Barry in that, but it floored me. I'm going, where did they find all these people? They found me down in Arkansas. Some, something you should know about Barry, too. He does Shakespeare like he's from England. Truly. Wonderful. Anyway, nice to see you here, Barry. Well, it's good to be here. Uh, you were talking about the, uh, the screening that we had two people left. I took my mother and dad to that screening and my dad sat there for the first two uh, episodes and uh, didn't go out for a smoke. So I knew we were all right. <laughs> and then we had the dinner break and uh, I said, uh, well, do you want to go home now? Are you tired? He said, well, hell no, you're going home. I'll take a cab if you, if you don't want to stay. <laughs> Said, I'm not going to miss the rest of this. Well, they were from Texas, and my dad knew all the source material, the Good Night Loving Trail and all that. So all, all the way home and until the wee hours of the morning, he bored me with uh, telling me stuff that I'd been hearing all my life anyway. <laughs> my dad was a state senator, and he held the world's record for the longest filibuster at one time for about 15 <laughs> minutes. Whenever I did anything wrong, he'd try to break that record. Uh, he, <laughs> I miss him, really. I, I miss having somebody talk to me for 14 hours. The premiere of a major television event. Tonight, the legend continues. A Pulitzer Prize winning masterpiece comes to life in an epic adventure. Lonesome Dove. Anyway, we, uh, we had a wonderful time on that show. I, w I, was, I was the luckiest guy on the show because I worked the first two weeks and uh, shot all the Arkansas stuff and a lot of the Texas stuff. Then I went away and did three more movies. And I came back uh, like three months later. And when I left, everybody was very happy. And I came back three months later. And everybody was just looking at, you know, mad. Everybody was mad at everybody else. I, I, I said to Tim Scott, I said, Tim, what happened? And he said, cattle drive. <laughs> we come to this place to make money. There wasn't nothing about fun in the deal. All I had to do was ride, uh, ride HUD around and kind of look like I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, it was fun. Now, Barry, uh, he's a good hand, too. This man knows how to sit a saddle, and you want to be on, the, on a trail with him. Ricky Schroeder told me that before it started, Tommy Lee invited everybody to his place in Texas to, to ride for a couple of weeks so that it looked like the ones who didn't know how to ride, ride. And I know you did a lot of walking in Lonesome Dove, but oh, were you part of, walking. of that, too? Huh? Were you part of that going? No, to no, no, no. They, they didn't. They, I, I wasn't supposed to know how to do anything, so I didn't have to learn to do anything. I just had to unlearn a bunch of stuff. July, when do you aim to start after that murderer, Jake Spoon? Jake is on the run from a shooting in Arkansas, where hapless July Johnson is sheriff. Maybe I better go on and catch Jake Spoon. 
Tell us a little bit about what it's like working with Tommy Lee as a director, because uh, everybody knows what a terrific actor he is, and we've seen his films, but from, your, uh, from the other side of it, from somebody who's taking directions from him. Well, I've, uh, I've worked with Tommy Lee in, in a, I don't know how many projects, but uh, he's all, I'd never worked with him as a director before. He wanted me to do something in The Good Old Boys, and I was busy, and he wanted me to do something in uh, the... 36 burials, whatever that was. And three. Only three. Alex, you just And, uh, oh, it was a wonderful movie. I saw it several times. I told, told Tommy that I watched it uh, about once a week when I first got the screener. And he said, gets better every time, doesn't it? <laughs> and I said, yep. <laughs> and uh, anyway, he hired me to do this part in uh, The Homesman. But uh, he wanted me to... Uh, do this part and I went out and then uh, I'm I, I'm bad about changing maybe a word here and there you know when I'm working when I'd change a word Tommy would say no <laughs> that was his direction I'd change another word no <laughs> so that uh, that was the direction I got I, I, I told him told him at the end of it, uh, if, if I'd been working more than one day, I would have had an argument with him, but I, one day it's not worth it. <laughs> but it, he's good. He's a good guy. And uh, he's, a one, he's, he's real smart, and he's got the social graces of a badger. <laughs> Emmy winner Tommy Lee Jones is Woodrow Call. I hate rude behavior in a man. Won't tolerate it. His word was law. Why not go up to Montana? But his strict code belied a hidden torment. Now he's the only son you'll ever have. I don't know that he is my son. Simon Winsor, tell us about him as a director. He got, the, I think, a DGA award, uh, the Emmy, yeah. and uh, that canvas of, of eight hours of, of storytelling. That's, that's pretty much of an accomplishment. Yeah, I've, I've worked with Simon in several different pictures. That was the first one that I worked with him. And then he had me in for um, uh, Crossfire Trail, which he directed, and uh, Monty Walsh, and something else, I think. But anyway, he's, uh, he, I, I like him a lot. He and Bobby didn't get along real well. <laughs> I, I, that's a rumor. I don't know. I, I wasn't involved in any of that part. But, uh, uh, then, but I like him. I like him a lot. Wilford, I think, doesn't like him because Bobby didn't like him, but... Well, nobody likes Wilford either. Well, Wilford, <laughs> you know, I like Wilford, but he doesn't like me. <laughs> well, tell us about Charlie Sheen. Well, I told Charlie early on, or Charlie told me, he said, uh, everything you read about me is true. <laughs> and I said, well, Charlie, everything you read about me is true. He said, well, I haven't read anything about you. <laughs> I said, that's because I fly under the radar. You might should have tried it about five or six years ago. <laughs> I don't know, he's, he's a great guy. Uh, I was at home for Thanksgiving, uh, not last night, th but Thanksgiving before. And he said, uh, I had a round trip ticket to go, go there and come back. So I, he said... Uh, when you come back, just turn that ticket in, and I'll pick you up in Fort Worth. I said, what, do you want to pick me up in a car? He said, no, no, I've got a, a plane. And I said, okay. So we, uh, I gave up my ticket, and he, he called me the day after Thanksgiving on Friday, and he said, plans have changed. I'm going to come by and pick you up tomorrow, and we're going to fly to New Orleans and go to the... Uh, watch the Saints play on Sunday and fly back Sunday night and work Monday. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I thought he was in Texas somewhere. He calls me the next day, Saturday. Or his security guy does. He didn't do this. But Did the plans he, change? Huh? Did the plans, plans change? changed. He said, we're not going to uh, New Orleans. I'm down in Cabo San Lucas. And uh, I'm having a good time here, so I'll pick you up tomorrow, Sunday, in the middle of the afternoon. Okay. 
Well, then I got a call about uh, one in the afternoon, said, we'll pick you up at seven tonight at Meacham Airport. Okay. So <laughs> I go over there and bring my, my uh, granddaughter and my grandson and my daughter and several people wanted to meet Charlie, so they came out to the airport with me. The plane lands about 7.45, and uh, Charlie's security guy gets off the plane, and I said, well, I don't think Charlie's going to get off the plane. And then pretty soon he gets off with his girlfriend and, another, and, and his makeup guy and his uh, publicist and a bunch of other people, and they come walking up, and he talks to my relatives and so forth. And we come back on the plane, and Charlie smokes everywhere he goes. I mean, smokes a lot. Marlboro's. And uh, that plane was, uh, it was a big plane, but it was not big enough. <laughs> and uh, his girlfriend smoked, and uh, he said, well, you can go up in the front if you'd like to, or I get away from the smoke. I said, no, I don't care. If it's your lungs, I can stand anything for three hours. <laughs> So we uh, got in, landed, we are going to land at, uh, at uh, Van Nuys Airport, and we in, it was fogged in, so we landed at Burbank, and my ex-wife drove out onto the uh, runway and picked me up, and there we go. That was it. So, he's a nice fella. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have done that. I mean, he could have gone from Cabo San Lucas up to Los Angeles. But he went from Cabo San Lucas all the way halfway across the country, picked me up, and then we came back. So, He's a he, lucky guy. Yeah. <laughs> and so are we to have you here with us today, Barry. Thank you. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I always enjoy these. There's the hat I wore in. Uh, <laughs> I wore that hat in, uh, Conig in uh, Conager. Uh, try this on then. Yeah. Right? This is the hat. Luster Bayless is going to be telling you about a little bit later on. Tommy Lee wore this in, in Lonesome Dove, but I wore this in Conager, but I wore it more like that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way it suits you. Thank you. My name is Rob Word, and we love bringing these programs to you. We've got a lot more scheduled coming up. We post a new one every single week, and we want you to subscribe, like, and share. Thanks for watching.